The financial crisis has been felt everywhere, but nowhere more so than in the heart of capitalism, New York City. A devastating collapse of wealth and sweeping job losses have left Wall Street a much diminished place. And the pain's also being felt by the high-end restaurants and real estate agencies that have relied on big spending bankers and stockbrokers. North America correspondent Michael Rowland reports. <laughs> This is what $24 million will buy you on New York's ritzy Upper East Side. With its sweeping views of Central Park, this luxury apartment is one of the city's finest pieces of real estate. But the asking price is somewhat lower than what it would have been before financial markets imploded. Most things that are trading are trading, you know, 20 to 30 percent below what they would have traded for in the last market. New York's high-end property market, one of the world's most expensive, has taken a big hit. Those forced to sell a home or two to raise some quick cash are having to lower their expectations. You know, sellers tend to respond slower than buyers. Buyers respond to economic news immediately and sellers tend to be a little bit in denial. And first they say, no, it's not me, and then they get angry about it and then finally they accept. And when that happens, that's when you can put the two together. The epicenter of the global financial system, New York City, has been particularly hard hit by the market meltdown. More than 30,000 Wall Street professionals have lost their jobs over the last eight months. Gone with them are the huge salaries and hefty bonuses that supported hundreds of high-end businesses. Places like this critically acclaimed French restaurant in the city's Tribeca district. This is probably the most challenging environment we've ever had over the last 20 plus years. Uh, we certainly we went through 9-11, which was a very difficult period for New York, for the restaurant business, for the entire country. In many ways, this is worse because you really don't know when the end is coming. Upmarket restaurants have had to lower their prices, sometimes substantially, to keep their kitchens busy. In this restaurant, we have a $79 and $120 price fix. That's not inexpensive, but compared to a lot of other restaurants of this caliber, it's very, very reasonable. Australian-born chef Sean Hergert is walking into the lion's den. He's just about to open a fine dining restaurant just steps from the New York Stock Exchange. When this restaurant was first planned two years ago, the markets and the economy were booming. Now the days of a lavish, expense account fueled lunch are over. You know, rather than buying the $5,000 of Margot, you know, these people are a lot more sensitive in what they're, what they're actually going to put on the table. So for me, we actually created this uh, one-page wine list where we actually put the prices down so that you can actually come in, you know, have a bottle between, you know, the price of $55 up to 100 and we have probably 30 or 40 selections where you actually can have a good cheap wine that is still great value and also has the quality of what we want to present too. The financial crisis is affecting Wall Street types in other ways as well. All of a sudden, our male clientele that would come in for their regular 90-minute massage would be in the locker room, in the steam room, for an extended amount of time. We were wondering if they were okay. They just didn't want to go back to the office. This midtown day spa is one of the few high-end businesses to benefit from all the economic stress. I think people aren't spending the big money to go, oh, let's go for a wonderful weekend down to Palm Beach or here or there. So they're doing little mini vacations here at the spa. So it's a, you know, inexpensive getaway for two, three hours. You come out feeling like you went on a real vacation. So bleak is the outlook on Wall Street that many of those who've lost their jobs there are now embracing an unlikely new employer. Hundreds have flocked to this jobs fair to seek work with the U.S. government. Well, I'm looking for another position, and I thought, you know, the federal government is a good place to uh, start since they're taking over everything. So. <laughs> John Simpson spent 40 years on Wall Street. He believes anybody who's worked in the financial sector can bring valuable skills to the government, particularly at a time when it's playing a much greater role in the financial system. There is so much money that's being thrown at the financial system at this point, and it's utterly important for people to be able to understand what's going on and also to uh, be able to regulate it to make sure that the money's not going astray. Switching from the private sector to a government job involves a number of adjustments, not least of which is a substantial pay cut. Many of the former Wall Street analysts were pulling in salaries in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. The rewards for public service are much more modest. 
I think a certain percentage of people will look at this as a great job and then find out that while their base compensation may be similar, the upside is gone. And if they're uh, living in the same homes or they relocate to Washington, D.C., which is not that much less expensive, maybe even more expensive than New York, then it'll be a struggle. Painful adjustments will be the order of the day until the New York economy returns to full steam. Michael Rowland, Late Line.